there, I'm sure. And, and you're the director, we can tell by the glasses. All right. Am I right there? I don't even need them. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> and we're talking to Adam Cushman. And The Whipping Club is the film. And earlier on, about 45 minutes ago, we talked to one of the little stars. And he gave us the 411 on what's going on with this film and how, as an actor, he was able to separate some of the more roller coaster rides of it with, from reality, which is really extraordinary. And I want to give you an unsolicited compliment as a director. Many directors would manipulate the emotional state of a child, but you did not. You did not. So he walked away unscathed and, and enlightened by the process. That's kind of huge. Um, yeah, it is. You know, I think, uh, first of all, Luke is a terrific young actor, and he brought, um, he brought a lot to the role. Um, but, no, I, I agree. It's, um, you know, when you're doing something like this, it's, um, it's a two- to three-minute piece, and you have to attain, you have to achieve a lot of emotion and intensity and, you know, make, make people afraid for the kid and make, uh, obviously make people want to read the book. But that's a really tough thing to pull off. And, again, you know, I, I hope we were able to do that. I think we were. Um, but it, to me, it's all in the casting. And so the, Eric and Luke were, were the ideal people to do that. And give us the quick upload. Let's just pretend that somebody hasn't seen it yet. It is possible. Okay. By the end of this interview, everyone will have seen it. But let's just pretend there's a couple of people who haven't. What's the storyline about? Uh, more or less, it's set in late 1960s Ireland. Um, the story is about a woman who gives up her, her child for adoption, thinking that he's going off to a better life in, in the United States, and learns that, in fact, he has not, and um, that he ended up in a very abusive orphanage of sorts, and then decides to go after him. And so he has gone after. And, and to not spoil the ending, but I'm guessing you're taking people on quite... Mr. Toad's Wild Ride without Disney. Uh, well, that's right. It's um, no, it's it's a very it's a very dark novel. I mean, it's uh, what made it into the short that we shot um, is just a fraction of what's in that actual chapter. So no, it is not it is not Disney by any stretch. No. I meant the Mr. Toad's Wild Ride part. Oh. That part's Disney, but it's a wild ride. And you know, it's interesting. We have tens of millions of children who have grown up in these kinds of atmospheres all around our planet. There are seven billion, ten hundred million people on this planet. And if you imagine the percentage of children that go through these traumatic experiences, it's a way for a lot of parents and children to resonate with something. So they're important stories to tell because if we never hear it and we grew up like that, we think we're crazy. We do think we're crazy, and we never quite get the coping skills. So whether you intend it or not, you're actually giving a, a bit of a permission slip to be part of a larger family and know that there is a reason, you know, and there is a solution, too. All right, I agree. And I, I agree with that. And I also think that the, the novel does a great job of looking at how these decisions can be very hard on, on the parents as well and what it's like um, when, you're, when your heart is in conflict with itself like that and so we tried to you know get some of that in there too well you wrote it yes you did come on in come on in let's say hi do you mind if she steps in front of you see chivalry is not dead there is a fine example adam cushman gentlemen so you wrote this thing i'm guessing i'm speculating here wildly but i'm guessing you must have some deeper understanding of this process as opposed to think of a good plot line here. You know stuff, don't you? It, it took me eight years to write, rewrite, research um, uh, this novel. It, it takes place in a foreign country, so I had to learn the flora and fauna. I had to know if seagulls fly over Dublin at 4.15 on Saturday afternoon. There was a lot that went into it, and um, it's not just an Irish story, though. It's as you said, it's a worldwide <laughs> epidemic, and um, and it's not only about child abuse, and, and it's definitely not only about the Irish Church. I mean, I get Google alerts from from all walks of life every single day, and um, I really think the story is, in the end, surprisingly, about forgiveness about looking the monster in the eye, which we all have dark sides in our personalities, in our countries, in our churches, in our homes. And when we look at that and accept it, that is the way that we move forward. And so, although it takes place in the 1960s, and we've made progress, and I see that progress, 
there's so much more to be done. And I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm very glad I'm that um, I took the Hi. time. Honey. <laughs> Love you. Thank you. Sorry. Very nice. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> so, to your point, to your point, and, and this is very important, you'll note that she just talked about forgiveness. <clears throat> and without getting too woo-woo here, there's a reason that forgiveness works. Because if you carry this stuff with you your whole life, the person that you think you're punishing because you're focusing on them, they don't know that you're obsessed with what they're thinking. And so you're carrying with you 300 pounds of stuff. So when you forgive it, you let it go and you get to move on. That's and so thank cool. you for that lesson. Thank you very much for having me. All right. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. We are, of course, at the New Media Film Festival. We have another wonderful... Very good. Hi, and I you. like, Thank you for I being like here. your dress. Thank you. You can borrow it anytime you want. May I, how did you know? <laughs> I, I am going to ask you the quintessential shallow question. Sure. What is Who it? are you wearing? Um, I'm wearing off the rack. Very nice. Yep. Very nice. Yep. A well known designer here in West Hollywood, even though we're in Westwood, um, off the rack. Is he the guy? He's got a mohawk. and It means I, I don't like shopping. And I went in and I found something that fit and was pretty and easy to travel with. It really was. And speaking of pretty, may I ask you a question? Sure. This film festival, yes. you are standing now right in front of The Golden Mean of you. the Media Film Festival. You yes. are standing in front of yourself. Yes. Yes. You have given birth yes. as the ultimate queen mother of all of new media. This is, this is the Oscars for new media. This is the Sundance for people with an iPad, an iPod, anything with a chip and a signal. This is an extraordinary Thank new you. world, a brave new world indeed. And you have done it. And all these people are here. We see a sea of human heads waving behind us during this live stream. Did you imagine it would ever turn out this way? Um, I just saw a vision of a place where filmmakers from around the world honoring stories worth telling in all media formats. So I'm delighted that it has come to this. And we actually help filmmakers through screening, competition, 45,000 in awards, and distribution, which in the total, short total running time space and feature length time space, that's pretty modern. I want you to remember this name, Susan Johnston. Susan Johnston, because her <laughs> name is going to be synonymous with new media. With new media. Thank you. Well, it's just true. All right, love I, you. We have to keep the line moving. Yes, we're going to keep the line moving. We're going to say hi to more filmmakers. We are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. This is the landmark. We're in Westwood. This is a very famous part of L.A. where so many movies have premiered going all the way back to the 1920s and 30s. And we're talking about new media today. We're actually presenting another form of filmmaking, another form of art, another form of storytelling using the way that we all do it now today, using Mr. Bush's internets and those series of tubes and all the other things that we've become quite familiar with. Coming up in just a minute, in fact, is this the right minute for you to come up or are you still having a chin wag over there? No, I'm, I'm all about you. We're gonna, <laughs> that is the right thing to say. We're gonna ask you to do something somewhat untraditional okay. and introduce yourself okay. to our live streaming audience and okay. tell us who you are and what your project is about. My name is Gerald Emmerich and I'm the director and writer for The Heart's Eye View and it's a 3D project. And uh, the project is a, is a romantic comedy, uh, a little bit dark, but it, uh, it's basically about two, uh, two sort of depressed commuters that live in a droll, Kafka-esque world, and they have rich 3D fantasies about uh, romantic, uh, sexy counterparts. And then the, uh, uh, so there's two different worlds, the lush color and 3D, and they live in a a very sort of other world and then uh, what happens is the 3D fantasies start to have their own point of view and they start to rebel about being a kind of cultural stereotype archetype and uh, that's where the fun begins. All right, so we're looking very much forward to seeing this. Um, is there a website or something that people can visit? Uh, no there's not. <laughs> well then, give us once again the name of the project so that we can burn it in our memories. Okay, it's called The Heart's Eye View. Side view and it's in 3D. Yes, it is. So, do we use the polarized glasses, or do we? Is it an anaglyph? Uh, you will need the uh, the whatever. I'm not sure how they're showing it here, but yeah, they'll, they'll, I think they'll have glasses, right? Otherwise, you're screwed. I am screwed. Yeah, they know it's 3D, so it's a 3D block. So yeah, so it'll be good. 
Well, I'm a huge 3D fan. Really? That's why I knew to say anaglyph or polarized, yeah, yeah. active or sure passive. A little, I know. Just a little. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so All much right. for using this wonderful technology, okay. and thanks for making an entertaining project for us. All right, great. I'll see you there. Bye. All right, my friend, I'll see you inside. Okay.